Ladles and jelly spoons is Tim Dapple with the rest in Tenerife. I'm here with the same shirt on as Monday. That's terrible, isn't it? I'd, I'd like to say that I washed it and put it back on, but I didn't. <laughs> I haven't shaved. I haven't cooked anything. I've got a beer. But for those who are saying, Oi, didn't think you were going to have beer. It's alcohol free. It's alcohol free. Anyway, ladles and jelly spoons. Thank you for joining us. If it's your first time here, this is Bath and Bath. And we have Christina. Hi, Chris. Hey. And Juliani. Hi, Julie. <laughs> Uh, Cleo sends her apologies. She's, uh, she's got something on this evening, and next week she's got something on, so it's going to be a few weeks. But she did say there's, uh, there's a, a bit of news that she could uh, join with us. So in a couple of weeks she'll be bringing out all the latest and greatest news about visas, about voting, even if you're British, which is good for me, and stuff like that. So uh, I shall let you know when she's available and everything. Hello, everybody. The room is open, Ian, if you want to come in. Or if anybody else wants to come in and say hello, just go to timothydowd.com slash live and uh, follow the instructions there. That would be cool. So, Juliani, I'll start with you this week. Um, what's going on? Plenty of sunshine. Plenty of sunshine. <laughs> I know you got a visitor. Yes, yes, my mom is still here. And, uh, yes, apart from uh, work, yes, we've been uh, doing a little bit of trips here and there and everywhere mm -hmm. the north of the island which is nice and cool and refreshing and yeah and then the south so a lot going on <laughs> south the desert yeah definitely yeah but in all uh, all in all it looks very uh, lush at the minute huh? if you uh, if you look at the um the plants they are they are greener than normally at this time of year. People are saying say. there's uh, there's no there's no sound, but I'm sure there is. Hmm. Need to reboot laptop has no sound. Well, it's Charlie asking if the mic's on. And Craig says you need to reboot. Just let me know in the comments if you can hear us. It looks like you can hear. It's the wired line output and. Uh, I think we're loud enough, don't you? Hello. Yeah. We can talk a bit louder. <laughs> <laughs> we can. So, Chris, what's up with you? You've you've actually um, decided what the topic is going to be this week. Yeah. Cool. First time that you've come up and said, I want to talk about this. Good. So, it's to talk about, what did we say? It's Christina's dreams yeah. and how to stay optimistic in a shitty world. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I didn't write shitty. I, I wrote... Uh, S H I seven seven Y, which looks like shitty with the ego. Eh. Okay. So, um, as I say, if you want to come and say hello, you can come and say hello in the room. Um, if I miss you coming in, wait, because uh, sometimes you pop in and, and then I don't say hi and then you pop out because I'm doing something or other. But uh, there you go. Sound is great. Oh, yes. Everyone says. So, Good. So it's just Charlie and it's Craig that are having problems. So we've got 44 people on. I don't know how many thumbs up at the moment, but uh, it says five here. I'm going to give myself a thumbs up, just because I like myself. you got to like yourself, haven't you? Yeah. Then go back on to live chat. Uh, that's what I keep forgetting, to go on live chat. All messages are visible. The Iron Man says it's fine. There you go. Cool dude. So... This and how about you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm, Your week? Uh, I've been, uh, I got a new chair that you missed because you came out the wrong yeah. door, but I got a new chair, uh, which is going to be better for me back when I'm editing. I've been doing a bit more editing because I've got the new drone. Mm -hmm. And it's so comfortable that we even got to shower and cook dinner. <laughs> just, just, I know, I'll tell <laughs> <laughs> you. killing me, man. She's, She's honest. Me. You have to be that honest. <laughs> Being honest like that is just saying, hey, you, you don't sweat much for a fat lass. <laughs> I mean, that's honest, but it's not something you'd say, is it? <laughs> as, as an example. As an example. Yes, yeah, so I got my drone, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. There's two, there's two types of people that comment on it. 
in Facebook and uh, and what have you. The f first type of people is wow, great footage, and really positive, and the others are, are surreptitiously saying you shouldn't do it, and they're saying it like, um, do you have permission for that, uh, or um, shouldn't you be uh, not flying over a beach? You shouldn't know? you be cooking you be and cooking? changing your yeah. shirt? And changing your shirt. Exactly, exactly. So we got two in the camp. But uh, yeah, I am following all the rules. I have registered the drone. I have uh, read the manual, which is the re prerequisite to flight. And I've also gone further than that. And I've been, I've been on YouTube and reading stuff up about how to uh, be safe with the drone. Also the rules and regulations of where you can and can't fly. And what you can and can't do whilst you are flying. Um, getting people involved if they're near you or if they don't want to be involved going more than uh, 500 meters away before you take off um, once it's up in the air don't fly over uh, crowds and it actually does say you shouldn't fly over a beach on a sunny day but the rules are basically designed for crowded beaches so they just assume that you can fly on a you fly over a beach on a cloudy day because they assume there's going to be nobody there, but don't fly over the beach on a sunny day because it's going to be full of clouds. Uh, it's full of crowds, not clouds, full of crowds, right? So the uh, the European rules are don't fly over crowds, but because they didn't want to put a you know mass per square meter of what a crowd is. They put in a guideline to say don't fly over a beach on a sunny day. But what they meant was don't fly over a crowded beach. So the letter of the law is don't fly over a beach on a sunny day. But all days are sunny here. And there's beaches all around the island. So we're a bit, a bit screwed on that one. So I'm taking it to mean don't fly over a crowded beach. And when they mean crowds, what they mean is like football gatherings or concerts. Because the people can't get out of the way if the drone automatically falls out of the sky. So, in a shitty world, I'm staying optimistic that I'm following the, uh, the heart of the law with maybe not following the letter of the law in that respect. Uh, but all the rest I'm doing, um, yeah, doing pretty well. And I'm enjoying the editing process. I mean, the reason I didn't go shopping today is because I was too busy editing. I went out this morning uh, with my 360 degree camera and my drone and sat on the cliff down the bottom there and started toying with the settings to make it more cinematic the, the camera settings so the camera settings you know like your yaw which is like left and right and up and oh, down I hear ah I can hear Ian Miller in the background yes cool -o -dudo. Uh Ian if you want to come on now's now's your time unless you're not ready oh, yet not. it's oh, now or never it's now or never Give it to me. I've got to get a threes up. Here we go. One threes up. World I'm going go. to go one, <laughs> two, three. How's that? Hello, folks. Hello, kiddo. How's it going? It's going all right here. You cool took, me, you took me in that corner, have you? Wait till I make myself respectable, like. That's better. Okay, cool. So, Ian, how was your day? Oh, my day was very relaxing, very quiet. Uh, um, uh, not very much to do at the moment. It's cold outside, it's wet outside. Uh, just doing a wee bit of maintenance here and there. Just uh -huh. to keep myself occupied and getting in under people's feet. You've been putting out some great content, Ian. I really do like your videos. So, do you guys uh, feel very much in the present moment when you are doing your, your filming and your editing and you are putting it up and uh, what have you? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm getting into the hang of doing it now. It's, uh, it's time consuming like for what I do. It's uh, very time consuming, but uh, yes. I'm very optimistic of what I can put out in the future. Yep, it looks great. <laughs> it looks great. It does, it does. I mean, uh, especially the older ones where you've been putting your, some of the uh, the pictures together from your trips to Ibiza. I quite like those. 
Because the, the first time we went abroad was Ibiza, wasn't it, kid? Yeah. Playa de Talamanca, just around the corner right. from the uh, Ibiza town. And right. we, were, yeah. we were in oh. that hotel. What was the hotel called? Argos. Argos. And it still exists today, the Hotel Argos. Yeah. It's like a half star. Yeah. Hotel. Yeah. But they wouldn't yeah. want yeah. to go there again. Well, I mean, it's, 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 uh, Boris is taking over from Liz Truss, is that true? Yeah. Sorry, Matt. I missed that. Do you see now his favourite to take over from Liz Truss leaves is Boris? <laughs> oh, hi. Oh, hi. That's, that's rumours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I don't be there. You could probably fly to Lanzarote, Tim, and Matt and Crack and get away to you. Sarah Childs. Sarah, I've just got to apologise to you, actually, because I didn't get to see DJ, and so I've got the card of the Mac Master. He's not coming here. And I've got the card of DJ. They're still here. I'm going to... Uh, I need your permission to open the Mac Master card to photograph it to send it to him, because I don't want to open it if it's got something personal in there. So you can either send me an email and give me the uh, things, or if it's okay, you can just clip it here. But if it's... Uh, if there's anything you don't want me to see or uh, what have you, then uh, let me know. Um, I'm going to photograph the one for DJ because that was already open, front and back, and I'll send that to him. He's gone home now. Uh, I didn't get to see him this time. Um, he is in Lanzarote, and um, uh, Dan and Sahara have gone over for a holiday as well, so they're, they're meeting up. I talked to Christina this morning about flights. There is a flight at 11 o'clock on Friday which gets in at 11.55, and then the return flight is 17.50, gets in at 18.45 here, but um, it's 64 euros each. So that's a, like 100 and, well, it's maybe 200 by the time we paid for parking or, or taxis or what have you, uh, to go there. So we don't know whether we're gonna go, and also I don't know whether they've got time on Friday, because I just, I just looked. So we'd have to go there and back in a day, which would be just too much for you, wouldn't it, Chris? I think so, and yeah. I couldn't leave but Chris. I would have done this for you. Oh, thank you. Aww. But uh, what I could have done was um, left you in bed all day. No? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, no. no. Book, a bucket by the that's, side that's of it and, 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 and a bag of chips. Uh, yeah, just put a bucket by the side of it and a bag of chips, you'd be all right. Not. Not. <laughs> okay, so sorry, Ian. I totally interrupted you there. No, Somebody, you're okay. Uh, Mr. Mulready said I'm talking too much. Why he had to private oh. message you to tell me that? I don't know. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking too much because it's my sh it's my channel. Well, that's your show. You're running the show, boy. That's not my show. This show is a, <laughs> it, it, no. This show is our show. It's, it's and it's your show. It's your show yeah. too. Yeah. There you go. Very, very well said, sir. Very well yeah. said. Mm. I'll crawl back into my shell. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, what a, what a laugh. So, Tim, you made it onto my channel. Says gay or not gay? Question mark. Cool, dude. I'm one of those. So. What's the uh, what's the topic today, Chris? It's how to stay optimistic in a BBD world <laughs> and my dreams, basically, but they're not so important. The dreams are not so important. That's what everybody's tuned in to hear. Exactly, your dreams. exactly. Of course they are. Yeah, they, they are important. They want the they want the interesting stuff. Yeah. Like tonight, I went on a train and it was just like it was 30 years ago. Yeah, but don't forget, not everybody's a German. Yeah. So you got to tell them what the, the trains were like 30 years ago in Germany. Yeah, they, they had two, two seats that faced each other. Different wagons, and last night it was always workers. 
There was one wagon non smoking that was full of course. The other one uh, comfy and stinky. <laughs> The old smoker was really crowded and didn't get a place to sit. Do you know where you were going? Yain. Yain means yes and no. Berchtesgaden. You were going to Berchtesgaden, okay. Yeah. Cool. With you, Grand Stephanie. I don't want to go to Berchtesgaden. And then we went to the loo, and that was the solution of Berchtesgaden. In the loo. And we missed it, and you went off. <laughs> oh, no. And I'm curious to know, when you are dreaming that, are you in a wheelchair or are you walking? No, never. You are, you are walking through, yeah. through the compartments? Yeah. So going uh, through all the smoking uh, compartments, uh, you you uh, are walking and rushing through. Okay, to Stephanie on my hand because it's always little. Okay. So there you can you can do whatever you want basically, yeah. right? Uh, apart from you got a little kid on on your sleeve and your husband's yeah. left you in Baker's garden in the toilet. <laughs> That's what I'm drinking tonight. It's juicy lime juice and alcohol-free beer. It's the only way I can get it down. Uh, your Sandy. My sh lager and lime. <laughs> Ian, have you been dreaming anything lately? Anything uh, special? Or do you remember your dreams uh, at all? Ah. Uh. Sometimes, sometimes I remember them. Uh, yeah, I see me getting up in the morning and saying, "Oh, I remember. I remember that during the night. I remember dreaming about something. I remember dreaming about maybe having to get up and cut my grass during the night or something like that. It was maybe too long, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just you know, we bits and pieces and that. Um, I, I would, I would say I'm a dreamer. No, 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 like that. <laughs> um, do you dream solutions to problems? I, I, I tend to dream solutions to problems. It's uh, yeah, that's it. it's it's funny you say that actually. Um, I see back in my working days, um, I've seen this going to bed and been thinking about something, and. You know, in your subconscious, you're dreaming about that subject, that thing, or that problem you had during the day. See, when you get up the next morning, that is the first thing that comes to your mind. Uh -huh. What you were dreaming of during the night. Whether, whether, whether you get the right answer or no, uh, yeah. it's a different story. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, don't know. I don't know if other people have that sort of feeling as well. But... The, the last thing that you're thinking about when you go to sleep, you can dream about it, and it's the first thing that enters your mind when you get up the next morning. Mm -hmm. I think you can actually do that. You, you can actually lucid dream. Have you tried that? Yeah, absolutely. You can lucid dream. That means you know you're in the dream, and yeah. therefore you can do anything you want. It's uh, You've got to get... There's a certain mind, a state of mind you've got to get into... To be able to do it, you've got to believe you can do it first of all, and you've also got to uh, to design a hook to find out when you dream. A bit like Inception, where he spins the thing, you know, and uh, when he knows, you got to know that you're dreaming. But lucid dreaming, so. that's that's a good thing, and I, th I think you can also um, create a good setting for that. So, like um, we once were talking about, uh, um, you're dreaming what you you were last uh, thinking of. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so you can actually uh, prepare a good night's sleep and a good uh, dream or um, a problem solution. Mm -hmm. um, maybe asking for for certain, uh, yeah, 
tips or or, or wh whatever you are seeking answers for mm -hmm. and um, yeah and then uh, just uh, re relax give in to it surrender surrender to it mm -hmm. and what I uh, um, like to do is also always have a, like a, um, a piece of paper and a pen next to me uh, because uh, I I never recall uh, m my dreams basically it's like waking up and um, and They're then there for a second and, and then gone, exactly yeah. okay. oftentimes mm. there are um, not not many that I can recall no I don't but remember my dreams either typically. but sometimes it happens that I wake up uh, in that very moment and then I uh, I write it down and that's uh, that's a good way especially if you're looking for problem uh, solutions uh -huh. yeah I think it's because lots of things are, are happening in your lives. Yeah. Oh, you mean that your life is pretty steady every yeah. day the same, yeah? Yeah. Okay. It's right, yeah. But then, on the other hand, uh, I mean, you are doing a lot of um, uh, audio uh, book um. reading. So you are listening to a lot of audio books, which... Uh, which entices uh, your imagination, I guess. Yeah. And um, and a lot of uh, the the things that you are listening to, maybe, or have been seeing or listening to throughout the day, it's uh, it's processed uh, throughout your dreaming process. Stephen's saying that if you fall from a great height in your dream and you don't wake up, you die. Uh. But the thing is, how do, how do you know? Because all the people that died, you can't ask them. <laughs> but what you were saying about the lucid... The, the, uh, go on, Ian. Uh, do you think, I mean, you can have, you can dream. And if you're, if you're dreaming in something, can you really go deep, a deep, deep dream? Where you're just constant, you're dreaming, you're just concentrating on that one particular subject. But you could dream lightly. You would be able to. He if somebody was op to open a door, or close a door, or you heard the noise, you could hear that. But you're still dreaming. You're still sleeping, and you're still yeah. dreaming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Inception. Yeah. And I think that's the uh, like the lucid uh, dreaming. Um, kind of effect uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, I would say like uh, taking a nap for not uh, a long period of time where you don't really uh, sleep a long period of time there uh, it tends to happen uh, more frequently that uh, that you are sort of lucid kind of still aware what uh, what those um, uh, mm -hmm. noises mm -hmm. or uh, other um, yeah, sense uh, sense uh, perceptions are, mm -hmm. um, and they can be incorporated in in the dreaming uh, process. And what I wanted to say is, um, sort of like lucid dreaming is uh, quite similar to um, to our um, human awakening. So uh, if we if we are um, not really uh, aware of something. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, then we are definitely dreaming, uh, or we are not conscious. Right. But we can um, um, be, um, uh, even though we are um, unconscious, we can still become more aware and uh, more awake um, within the within the mess. I would say. Wow. So we're, we're getting deep here now. Maybe the whole thing's a dream, and really, I'm a prince. Yes. And it's just lunchtime, and I'm having a nap. To oh. be here, and exactly. then you wake God. up and you I'll put this up on the screen. Ray Duffy says, Hi, guys and girls, <laughs> I'm Basil. I'm just watching Tim and Kevin from months ago. Well done. And then he says, I dreamed I ate a 10 pound marshmallow, and when I woke up, my pillow was gone. Good one, Ray. And Webby's on. Webby, boom. Webby's on. Webby, boom. Paul Webb is probably down there in the pub wondering why I'm not drinking alcohol. But yes, he did say alcohol free? Question mark. Yeah, I'm on a health kick for a couple of days. Weeks. Weeks. Need to lose weight. Need to lose weight, do I? That's what the doctor says. Yeah, when the doctor says you're impotent, you get a dress impotent. <laughs> <laughs> 
If I don't think it's healthy no. drinking uh, 25 cans of alcohol-free beer. No, did the doctor <laughs> suggest that? No, just to get a buzz in the video. I think I'm getting a um, muster worse. Have you overdose on uh, on lime juice? Go on, Ian. <laughs> Do you see when you're, you're talking about dreaming? When you're dreaming, would you do you, do you dream posit positively or do you dream negatively? Give me an example. Right. Well, what I, what, I, what I was thinking about positively. If you go to your bed, and as I said earlier on there, if there's something you think you have the solution to, right, and you fall asleep and you're dreaming about. I would say you're dreaming positive, positively. Uh, you're, you're looking for an answer and you're looking for a positive answer. So when you wake up in the morning, you've been thinking about that and you've been thinking positively. If you went to bed uh, and you fell asleep and you had negative thoughts, mm -hmm. that would have that would affect what you're thinking about. When you get up the next morning, you would get up with a with a negative feeling in your mind. That, that's, that's, just what I, that's just what I'm thinking about, like, you know? Mm -hmm. Have you got an answer for that? Have you got something else that you could add on to that? I just found out when I got a bad dream, it can spoil the whole day. I wake up in a bad mood and it'll stay like that until I go to bed. And you don't want that, I'll tell you. Don't do <laughs> Ray Duffy, thank you so much for the, uh, for the donation there. Tim, you are sober October. Have the next one November the 2nd, Maggie's birthday. I definitely will. No, actually, I said Christmas, didn't I? Yeah. But that probably won't make it till Christmas. I won't make it till Christmas. Ugh. No. But yes, Ian, I would uh, definitely See say, you, I would definitely say that um, it um, it helps a lot um, to create um, um, a healthy surrounding uh, before you go to bed. So mm, the the setting um, is always uh, is always important. Uh -huh. So um, yeah. and that also makes uh, a good dream or, or, or bad dream or nightmare or, um, yes. And, and also in our dreams, I mean, we also uh, process uh, our fears. Um, fears? They fears. Too. They too. <laughs> they too. And then you might have to get up Dave during, Butler. during the night. Am I the only one reading comments here? David Butler says, Ian, like you, if thinking of something in work, strange dreams about solving word puzzles or matching patterns, then wake up not worried about the problem because it seems ear. Mm -hmm. I think that was a mis I think there's a, a, a typo, but there uh, you go. I, yeah, I, I agree, agree with what Christine says there. If you've been dreaming and you wake up and you've had a bad dream and you're not in a good mood, it puts you out for the rest of the the morning and sometimes for the rest of the day. I've I've had that feeling. I've got up in the morning. I've had a bad dream. It's put me in a bad mood. And everything goes wrong that particular day and in that particular time. I would agree with what Christine said there. Yeah. Why am I definitely. totally the opposite? I mean, if I have a good dream and I wake but, up, I'm in a bad mood because it was a good dream and not real. But if I have a bad dream <coughs> and I wake up, I'm happy that it was just a dream. So I I I really get pissed off. It's just to be when, when I've had a good dream and it's not real, like rolling down the hills. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Remember that one. Uh, <laughs> but what does that tell you? You are the one in charge. You got the one. You got the uh, remote control. Uh huh. Talk about remote control. Simon Farrant says, Tim, was it a dream or did you get rid of that TV you put up for sale the other day? <laughs> it was a dream actually, because I put it up for sale. I got so many idiots calling me that I decided to just say it was sold. I've kept it. So if you want the TV, go and pick it up. Uh, Heather McCarthy, I never remember my dreams. Only bits and pieces of them, so they never really make sense. You know, they make sense when I'm dreaming them. But afterwards, when I try and think about it, they don't make any sense whatsoever. 
Uh, David Butler says, dreamt in the 1960s about a part of London underground that had been blocked off during the Blitz. Woke up to the programme news, read the Mile End Tube disaster. Oh, dear. Mm. dear That's the programming going in. And Joanne's screaming, I'm always dreaming, my teeth are falling out. Ooh. Ah! T dreaming Ooh. about uh, teeth? Yes, I would definitely look that one up. Oh, uh, you know, uh, I, people... Look, there's books, isn't there, say that we can we can interpret your dreams, yeah? Yes. Oh, uh, that's bumf. Bumf. Okay. Humbug, I tell you, humbug. Okay. <laughs> and what about, I would like to know about uh, the dreams, not the dreams that we're dreaming uh, during the night, but the dreams that um, we have and we have made reality. How about those dreams? I didn't understand the question. Can you say it again? Okay. Not, uh, not only the dreams that we are dreaming at night yeah. during sleeping, uh, but the dreams that we have, like uh, I have a dream that one day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so those dreams, uh, what, mm, what about those? They're just wishful thinking. Okay. How about the, the one that you made reality? <laughs> it's not coming, a dream coming here and living here. Then it's nothing to do with dreaming then. No. Well, that's real. Yeah, but uh, back um, a few years back, when it uh, still hasn't manifested, uh, it has been a dream, hasn't it? The, uh, it was not manifest. <laughs> Just an idea, tech of. Oh, well, idea or dream, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, but it has been uh, some kind of um, thinking. I think that when you say, I have a dream, mm -hmm. you don't really expect it to come true. I think it's a, it's a wishful thinking, right? And then if it does come true, it was either your sights were too low, you know, so you, you were just planning. It was nothing to do with dreaming. But uh, if you dream big, you know, like I'm going to get 100,000 followers on YouTube, you know, that's wishful thinking, right? But on the day that I get 100,000 followers, I can always look back and say, my dream came true. So it's all retrospective. Your dream came true. <laughs> Make okay. your dreams come true. Marie Altier says, I just dream we're going to That's... live in a world that we feel safe. I know that not going to happen, but you're not safe to walk your dogs nowadays without getting jumped in the middle of the afternoon on a Sunday. Well, I would move away from that place immediately. Yes. All choices. Yep. Go and live with some nice people. How about your dreams, Ian? How about those dreams I was just mentioning? Are they dreams or just wishful thinking? I had a, I had a dream. You had or have? It's, it's dreaming and there's also... No, there's, there's dreaming and there's dreaming and wishful thinking. Uh -huh. Dreaming and wishful thinking would be... Yeah, I'll maybe achieve that someday. But you could have a dream, but you could make the dream come true. Yes. I, I could I could dream that I'm going to have a beautiful sunflower plant at the top of my garden. Mm -hmm. I could make that dream come through, come through. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that, I've got to get my yeah, seed and plant my seed, plan, and I've it? got to look after it. Yeah, but then it's a plan. That's what I'm saying. It's, typically, no, the, well, OK, dreams, it's a plan, but you're... Yeah. you're your dream has now become a plan. Yeah. Okay. I think when people are you've, saying, you've I have a dream, or I dream that one day, that they don't expect it to come true. I think that's, that's what the difference would be for me by saying I've got a dream that one day we'll all be nice to each other and live in harmony with justice for all, right? And... Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's probably not going to happen. I know that we, everybody's got to work on it and everybody's not going to work on that. So therefore, it's a dream that maybe we can work towards or something like that. Whereas if you say, I'm going to plant a plant and it's going to flower on Friday, that's a plan. Uh, yeah. But do you think uh, that, that um, like we confuse uh, dreams with wishful thinking? No, I think wishful thinking is also, in certain circumstances a different animal to a dream where whereby uh, you act as if something is going to happen when really deep down you know it isn't 
you know. But that's just a belief. That's right. It's like, you, like, and it's your it's own. It's like voting conservative if you're a worker. And it's your own. Earning less than 250000 And it's your own belief. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, uh, it's... I guess it's also um, taking uh, taking action and making certain uh, sacrifices um, uh, towards something. So um, if, um, if if we say, "Oh, I have that dream," uh, yes, am I uh, am I willing uh, to uh, to put uh, in the work or to sacrifice certain things? Mm -hmm. um, to to make it reality or or I not? Un I understand what you're saying. It's just that. The, the word dreams and language is very specific in that yeah. respect, right? And you would not use the word dream if you were expecting it to come true mm -hmm. or if you expected it to come true without a lot of hard work and luck to be true. Mm -hmm. And Taking uh, John Lennon's words, you may say I'm a dreamer. Mm -hmm. So telling somebody you're a dreamer means like you're thinking of stuff that's basically not going to come true. So this semantics of if your dream comes true... Either your dream was too easy, mm -hmm. you know, right? yeah. or it wasn't a dream, it was just a plan, in my mind. Yeah. But I could be wrong, but I'm always right. And it's always, it's always your own thing. Like you said, uh, they might call me a dreamer. Um, that's them, Yeah. right? But, uh, but you can prove it differently. He's not the only one. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> Okay, Craig says maybe certain things in your mind get remembered, not a dream, but when you wake up, it's the interesting part when you wake up, right? Yeah. Uh, I have a theory that you dream just before you wake up. Sometimes it feels like that. It does. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe uh, what's the word? Eternity. Yeah. Heaven and hell. Mm -hmm. That heaven is the last millisecond of your life is stretched out into eternity. Mm -hmm. Tim, you're saying the word dream is too soft when it comes to changing the world. Vision or ambition are stronger words, plan even stronger. Yep, that's exactly what I'm saying, is that you would use the word dream when you don't expect it to be easy to achieve or for it to come true anytime soon without a drastic change of other things. Whereas a vision might be the same as a dream, but uh, you have a plan to get there. And uh, ambition is the emotion that you need to make the vision or the dream come true. I don't know, yeah. Would so you maybe then words. say that a dream is maybe mm, too feminine and, uh, and the words uh, vision, ambition uh, and plan are more masculine and more, yeah. What is it in German? Traum. Is it der Traum? Uh, Der Traum. It's manly, well, it's no, I, I'm not talking about the articles. Uh, pa pardon my French. Uh, uh, screw the articles because das Mädchen is auch keine die Blume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Basically, um, I. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense now. No. But. Um, In fact, I don't know what pronouns the dream is going to use these days. Der Traum. Der Traum. It's männlich. It's uh, masculine in German, right? Yes. Uh, what is it in French? Spanish. You know? El sueño. El sueño. El sueño. Yeah. Rêve. No? Yeah. The rêve. La rêve. rêve. Yeah, well, that's female then in French, right? La rêve. La rêve. Le rêve. Je, je ne sais pas. Je ne sais pas. <laughs> je suis désolé. Je ne parle pas français. So, I got assaulted on Sunday when I was walking my dogs, left me shocked and bruised face and other injuries. Oh, my God. I hope you called the police and the people were brought to justice. When you, when you have a dream, is it, have you, are, not, are you optimistic of getting your dream into reality? It depends on, on who you are, I suppose. I mean, I think that uh, if you are an optimist, then yeah. But if you're if you may be a pessimist, then you say, ah, oh, it's just pie in the sky. You know, it's just a dream. It's not real. Or a realist. Or a realist, yeah. Well, if you're a realist, you might say, that's just, what you're dreaming there is pie in the sky. It's never going to happen. 
right? Or you can say, I dream that it will all that we'll all have you know bread and butter tomorrow, and uh, and you still you still dream it even though you you know you, there's no evidence of it. So it just I depends mean, what you're talking about. Really, real, it's quite a deep conversation. Realistic, uh, realistic uh, being realistic about uh, dreams. Uh, yeah, uh, it mm, can be tricky because uh, to make dreams uh, come true. Um, I guess we have to work with uh, something that is not external, that is not very visible and tangible and uh, uh, and out there because it's just internal uh -huh. in the first place. It's a it's an internal image that we have, and uh, and that's the um, we are the only one who can uh, who can make it visible or tangible mm -hmm. or audible. So basically, um, uh, any production that you are making, for for instance, with your drone or any video content you are putting out, you first had in your in your head how it's going to be uh, looking. Okay, I understand. So in that respect, dreaming is making a thought um, or creating a thought. Yeah, creation. Okay. Creation. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I just want to read another thing. I dream of eventually <laughs> living in Tenerife and joining Tim and Chris personally every week for Meetup Mondays is Cole's place. Woohoo! Oh, wow. <laughs> you can make that oh. That's a good dream, actually, isn't it? They, actually, they are um, working on the um, digital nomad visa, mm -hmm. which will allow you to work here as long as you can work remotely. And it's mm -hmm. not for a Spanish company. That's, that's the thing. It can't be a Spanish company. And there was an answer to that. When does a dream become a nightmare? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spending every Monday with me and Chris is a nightmare, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what else was there? There was, a, 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 there was an answer to that. Okay, I've missed it. What does a dream become a nightmare? Uh, oh, Col, you get bored with all the constant sunshine and cheap beers and breakfasts. No. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Heather's saying never get bored the sunshine Pete and Shell Man, Anne Marie's saying the subconscious mind can create a fantasy dreams not under your control as well as nightmares when you wake up I want to continue the fantasy dream I can't bad dreams can be prominent in your mind mm. and Tina's saying I often daydream but being in, about being in Tenerife or if I can't sleep I go to my happy place in my mind happy place Happy place mm -hmm. is good, eh? and that's uh, mm -hmm. that's a, a good mm -hmm. place to be. Yeah, even even when you are not uh, sleeping, mm -hmm. you can do some daydreaming, as you call it. Or as It's Craig says, dream meaning yep. a series of thoughts, images, and sensations occurring in a person's mind, and he's added yep. during sleep, but it can also be a daydream. Mm -hmm. uh, Calls for Sarah says, I was emotional wreck leaving Tenerife this time. One over there, but the over there, but maybe not now. Save a fortune on heating bills. Mm. Barry Oliver, good evening, you all, Tim. Cold and dark in Scotland. Craig's on, dream on. I dream that NHS workers get paid a fair wage. You don't have to dream that. You can actually do something about that. And uh, Scotsman in Tenerife is on. Don't know who he is. <laughs> I had a dream I was in Tenerife last night, Lon. I had a dream you were in Benidorm. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. So what he is. So what he is now. I think he was in Benidorm. Actually, you can't tell because because you might be watching a video of him in Benidorm, but that was like six months ago. Uh, Thomas, you may think I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. There you go. We join you all in our happy place, Julie Wade says. And lifetime slimness, you are where you are in your head mm -hmm. that is steep as well isn't it it's a good one yeah yep i was i was reading i was when i was young and a teenager i was reading descartes or descartes whatever you how do you really say it you know i think therefore i am in the bedroom and my dad shouts up says timmy upstairs i said how the hell should i know <laughs> No, but that's a good one. The um, you are where you are in your head. Yeah, because uh, we are who we are in our subconscious mind. Because uh -huh. that's our um, our automatic uh, response. So 
we do things automatically uh -huh. because that's how we are programmed in our subconscious mind. That's true. Who programmed me? I want to know. I want my money back. All of them. <laughs> Christian Bertrand is on from Sunny Not Ending. Bad. And he says hi together. Also, hello zusammen. Hello, hello zusammen. <laughs> hello zusammen. Hi zusammen. together. Ich hoffe, es bleibt kein Traum. Ich möchte in circa sechs Jahren in Tenerife wohnen. Dream on. Yeah. Translate that. It says, I hope it doesn't stay a dream. I want to be living on Tenerife in six years. Dream on. Dream on. Yeah, Good man. So Good man. Yeah. Back in Scotland yesterday. Oh. No hard luck, Kevin. <laughs> I dream of the UK rejoining the EU. Actually, probably Poland and Italy will just leave first. There'll be plenty of room. Uh, oh, Sarah, that's, that's, that's nice. You framed our picture. That's beautiful. So cool. you, you got your happy place at home. <laughs> Good. Wow. Yeah, Tim, but the right, dream right, still right. has not come true. There you go. I oh, know. I oh, know. As I say, dreams just don't come true by accident. You've got to make them come true. Exactly. And uh, the only way you can do it is to find like-minded people that dream the same thing and come up with a plan. And I think what we need now is a leader that is not selfish. Uh, in the world, I'm not talking about the UK now, a leader in the world is not selfish, who can explain to people that we've had it so good in the past hundred years after the Industrial Revolution that a post-Industrial Revolution um, world is going to have to be... We're going to have to be worse off in ourselves to be better off for the world. You know, so you've got to eat less meat, no factory farming chickens, all that type of thing, you know, no massive agriculture, so things are going to get more expensive. If we stay with the current um, system of money and goods. So what you want really is a plan of how to save the world, the planet's climate. And then everybody get together and make the whole world a massive kibbutz or something like that, you know. Where everybody just tills the soil, produces food locally, trades over shorter distances with resources that you don't have. The major resources like clean water, energy and stuff should be a global thing that is basically created and given to everybody for free. You should never have to pay for energy. And uh, we just gotta find ways of making it uh, easy to, to move around, you know? So, I mean, that's a dream, really. But first of all, you've gotta get away from the ownership and money and services and things. and that is the hardest thing because people just can't imagine not paying for something, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or, or not striving to get a better one, you know, it's, but that whole concept has to change. But how, um, how do we uh, start doing that? Unfortunately, the only way is a bloody revolution or a natural disaster. But just take yourself, for yeah. instance. Yep. I mean, you're saying um, not uh, striving for better or not wanting uh, the same uh, or, or the, the next better thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we, we all um, um, can do our uh, little bit to it because obviously you also always want uh, the, the newest updated uh, version exactly. of any technology. Exactly. And uh, I want uh, certain other uh, updated things. So, mm. uh, so we are all in uh, sort of like putting our little um, piece uh, or little uh, drop to it. I think what, and you, what you can do is you can, right, we've, we've stopped using plastic in dental care. Mm -hmm. So we're using these pastels yeah. on, and we're using bamboo. Yeah, toothbrushes. Brushes, right? So that's one thing we can do. But basically, it's, um, that is just a, a message, right, mm -hmm. to say we want to reduce plastics. We're not really reducing plastics because we, we use a lot of surgical gloves, we use a lot of syringes. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so there's yeah. lots of stuff that we use. Uh, but we say no, and we don't buy the white chicken, we always buy yellow chicken. Mm -hmm. 
or we'll we'll try and get a better welfare piece of meat or a better welfare mm. vegetable. So you 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 think about it like that, and if everybody or a lot of people do it, then it does make a difference. Exactly. It does make a difference. Like Kim was saying, uh, we can we don't need it perfectly, but uh, if if we all do our little mm -hmm. uh, bit uh, to it, then yeah. uh, and. And also keeping uh, keeping the intention yeah. uh, uh, alive yeah. uh, and staying uh, staying uh, awake and staying um, yeah aware uh, on on a on, on a continuous level because it's it's not uh, doesn't really help if it's only uh, once uh, it's it's constantly making that little check up oh uh, did I do that or did I um, yeah, but what, or what could I do revolution. better. I'm saying revolution uh, in the in that we need a revolution before a disaster, right? And these little bits that we do are all sort of nice. And some people can't afford not to buy cheap meat, and not to buy cheap mm -hmm. vegetables, or, or never buy vegetables or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and only use plastic because it's cheap and it's, you know, it's called plastic rubbish for a reason, right? Um, but if you look at it, I mean, you read people like Michael Moore, I assume, or uh, what's the guy, the long haired guy. Uh, um, Russell. 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 Yeah. Russell. What's his name? Brand. Brant. 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 Russell Brant. I watch him. I watch him, and Michael Moore, and they're both saying that there's a hundred companies that create eighty percent of the carbon gases. Only a hundred, right? So you could actually make a decision and go and knock on their doors and say, "Don't do it anymore," but. All the syringes, nobody would make syringes anymore because you can't create plastics. No, but there'd be no tubes, there'd be no medical. So it's not, it's, it's easy to say, let's stop, let's stop plastic mm -hmm. in the world, but you don't know how, how invasive all these things have become over the last hundred years mm -hmm. in the industrial revolution. So there has to be a de industrialized revolution for us to get back to being in harmony with the world. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, is that you can have 90% of the people in harmony with the world, but if 10% don't, then it's the 90% are, are, are wasting the time. So you really do have to have a, a either a resource war or a natural disaster for people to come out the other side to say, we won't do that again. Yeah. Or stay um, uh, or stay being a positive example you can do that as well but uh, remember going back to dreamers that's uh, yeah. the same as hope right hope is the last bastion of the well whatever it says so politics and business are based on relationships Brexit causes divorce expect a divorce be nice and do business dream on like in Star Trek First Contact, when Picard says they didn't need money, everybody worked for the community, exactly. What about those protesters that poured milk over the floor in Waitrose? I didn't hear about that one. That's wishful thinking, Tim. Makes so much, that, that makes so much sense, right? Hi, Kevin. I think you're bang on the nail there, Tim. Your lifetime experiences programmed you. Thank you. Good blog, Tim and Co. says Stephen. I'm working backwards here. Okay. Uh, where's next on your travels, Kevin? And um, plastics for necessary things, medical, for instance. Yeah, you're right. It's a, uh, it's, it's it's a hard one, and I don't think Balcony Vanta is going to solve it. No. But uh, we're we're what's we we're raising awareness. There you go. <laughs> That's the word. That's it's the hard word. to be optimistic. Uh, can, I, can, I, can I back up? No. Right. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> go on, Ian. There you go. Can I pick up on uh, uh, a tail end of uh, uh, a comment that Christian made there? Everybody work for the community. It's a, it's a thing now. We're talk I'm going to talk about food. Um, we find now there is a lot of places in the community now where they're forming community gardens. Um, they're growing their own fruit, vegetables, and what have you. Now, that serves us uh, a double purpose. It's serving us uh, providing food uh, for the people around about, especially in this day and age. And it's also serving us 
using a uh, land um, which has maybe been wasteland at one time. Uh, the communities are getting together and they're, they're cultivating that land, they're planting the vegetables and they're starting up their, their uh, garden shops and what have you. It's all, it's all happening in the community. I think this is a, a thing now that more and more people need to realise. I mean, every day people talk about they're going to the supermarket. Oh, this is up, this is up. They go tomorrow. Oh, the thing's up again. So I think now we all need to sort of screw the head a wee bit uh, and look to our communities to get more involved uh, in producing food for ourselves now. Um, if, 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 I mean, when the farmers and that are producing producing food and mass producing it, their costs are going up, um, which is in turn just getting passed on to the consumer. So this again is community work. So let's all the communities get together and do their wee bit. I know in my area there is one or two community gardens sprung up. Now I'm not talking about small gardens. I'm talking about uh, people taking on acres of ground and cultivating that themselves and they do everything themselves. They do all their, uh, uh, they look after all their plants, they do all their uh, regeneration of, uh, of their waste and everything and it all goes back into the ground, it's all recycled back into the ground. So I think in, I think in time to come um, more and more people will be, go I would expect more and more people to be going d down that avenue uh, sort of producing your own food. I personally love producing my own food. I produce for my own needs. Uh, and being, I'm not being a pessimist, I'm being an optimist. Um, it's saving me uh, uh, a, a lot. It's saving me money and it's giving me a lot of pleasure. Mm -hmm. And I think it will give other people a lot of pleasure as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. And you are growing too. Yeah, we we are growing our herbs. Yeah, that, there they are now. That's yes. that's that, yeah, that's it. There they are. That's basil in the background. And a pied that, a pied from. That's basil faulty. That is. <laughs> Not Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Not Ray. <laughs> <laughs> and oregano. Oregano, yeah. And thyme. Tomio or Tomio? Was it? Uh, Tomio. There's Pauline. Pauline's made a comment there. Is, um, it's hard to be optimistic in this world with everything going on. Yeah. I, I, I would take the point. It is hard, but you have to be optimistic. You don't have to you be. Have to be positive. You have to be positive in the world. Sorry? Neil Lewis, we're all told to eat wheat and veg, become vegan, meat cows produce much methane. Now we're out farting the cows. Not a joke, reality. They do, they do say that mass produce, production of cows is one of the major uh, contributions to the climate change. Yeah, they do. They say that. Yep. But uh, we're, uh, we're at the end of the tether now. We've, we've done the hour. It's amazing, isn't it? Wow. That's really, really amazing. I, th uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it today. Yes, If I didn't get to your you. question, I apologise. <laughs> if you want to ask a question, you can either send me an email. You can send Ian an email. His address is in the description. Or Yuliani. Uh, we'll all get it. Or you can leave it as a comment below this video. If you're watching on Catch Up, thank you for getting this far. And uh, if you're with us live today, all 53 of you, uh, thanks for supporting the channel. Mm -hmm. We really do appreciate it. We're going to go around the table now, say tra, and then I'm going to have to go and cook. Ian, thank you for joining us again. Um, you, if you want to join us, just let me know, and I'll open the room for you every week. And if you want to uh, to submit uh, something for us to show, then um, I'll put you back on the uh, on the list for Frame IO. Uh. But that would be that, that that would be handy, but uh, I'll talk to you about that some other time. Offline, yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always saying I'm going to do it, but I never get there. I'm always too busy. Haven't got enough time, as somebody says. <laughs> <laughs> always um, busy in nature. 
That's it. Busy in nature. Yeah. Uh, someone, someone to finish up with. <laughs> uh, it might be, it might be relevant for uh, for chat tonight. You've heard of a saying: every cloud has a silver lining. So, find the silver lining. Look for the positives in everything. Even the most negative situation can have a silver lining. When things go wrong, ask yourself, what have I learned from this situation? Have I gained anything? Has anyone shown you unexpected kindness? Are any of your relationships stronger? Do you know what you'll do different next time? Take some time to think about the great things you want for your future. Visualize them, or even better, write them down. Imagine how it will feel to achieve these goals and remember this positive feeling. Come back to it when you're feeling down and you'll get an instant push. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, Thank you've been you. watching Balcony Banter. And we are nominated for an Oscar. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining us today. Um, Christina, your last words? I just looked at some films he made with the drone and they're fantastic. Aww. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you very much. Freaky yeah, Friday is going to be, I'm going to be showing the, uh, the settings one I did this morning. Plus I'm going out tomorrow and hopefully doing some interviews. So stick around for Freaky Friday. I'm just going to be in a bar somewhere. Uh, if you want to join me, let me know and I'll tell you where I'm going to be. I can even come to you because I'm driving because I'm not drinking. There you go. Yuliani? Yeah. What's the... Well, just be uh, imperfectly perfect and, uh, yeah, <laughs> and do your, your, little, uh, your little piece every day for, for, yeah, for a better world. And, uh, yeah, and that's what, uh, what hope is. Um, uh, we got to keep going and got to stay uh, optimistic and, uh, and uh, optimism you can uh, uh, achieve by by doing your best every day and your best doesn't have to be uh, looking the same every day so uh, we shouldn't be getting stressed about if uh, if it's not uh, the same as yesterday that's true but uh, but still making the effort uh, i think that's uh, the best way to go and on that note ladles and jelly so. spoons google thinks you might like that one next that one and if you want to support the channel, you can support it uh, by going to our wedding photograph down the book corner there. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Yes. And we'll see you on the next one. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>